This is the Lauer 17mm f1.8 lens for Micro Four Thirds. Or should I say this is the box for the... And a mighty fine box it is too. Other manufacturers should take note. Okay, let's see what this box holds. It holds an instruction manual, a quality control card, a guarantee card, and there appears to be a lens. As soon as this lens is in your hand, you realize what lovely quality it is. It's so solidly made, completely from metal, other than the caps. This is the lens hood. You can never find a dot when you need one. Fits beautifully. I must say, all in all, this feels like a good quality piece of kit. Very impressed. The lens hood has turned out to be one of the bigger disappointments. It's far too shallow and really doesn't block much in the way of light. It is beautifully machined from metal, but as I say, pretty much useless to me. I'll use this instead. This is a 46 millimeter flared lens hood. And uh, to make it just a little bit deeper, I've put a UV filter on the back of it and taken out the glass. This screws in easily to the filter thread on the lens and uh, serves the purpose well. And the lens cap fits nicely on the outside. The aperture ring clicks gently into place and it is possible to stop between stops, which can be handy for video. The focus ring at the moment is a little stiff, but it's very smooth. I kind of figure it's best to be a little stiff to start with um, rather than too loose. This is just a sample focus rack to show how smooth the focus is. Okay, let's see how well the bayonet fits. This is the uh, Panasonic G9 and uh, clicks into place and fits extremely well. There's no scratchy effects when you put this on, it uh, glides very smoothly into place. Very nice. Sample shots. At f1.8 there's quite a lot of vignette in the corners. 2.8 not so bad, f4 not so bad again, f5.6 and this is as good as it's going to get for vignette. The vignetting never actually goes away at all, as you'll see later. From a sharpness point of view, f1.8 is soft, especially compared to f2.8, much, much sharper. In fact, the lens keeps sharpening up a little until you get to about f5.6. And then from F8 onwards, it just starts to soften off a bit. Each aperture click softens more. And by the time you get to F22, it's very soft indeed. This is as close as I could focus the lens and hopefully this will demonstrate the depth of field at various F-stops. You may notice that the in-focus range forms an arch. This is obviously following the curvature of the lens. 
The most revealing part is when we look at this at 100%, which comes up next. Okay, f1.8, there's a lot of aberration in the out of focus points at this close focus. You can remove it, but it's a little tricky, I've got to be honest. Um, the aberration is still there at f2.8. It's just these high contrast out of focus areas where it seems to suffer. Um, by f5.6, it's pretty much gone and it's very sharp. Again, in this sample, the lens is sharpest at about f5.6 and gets softer slowly as we click through the aperture range. Out in the wild, AKA the view from my back garden. F1.8, you have vignette. F2.8, you have vignette. F4, vignette. F5.6, this is as good as it's gonna get. This is gonna be the same now throughout the rest of the aperture range. In case you're wondering, I'm focused on the house in the background. Let's take a look at that 100%. At 1.8, it's quite soft compared to 2.8, where it sharpens up a lot. It keeps on sharpening at f4 and again at f5.6, and that's as sharp as it's going to get because from f8 onwards, it's going to decrease slightly throughout the aperture range until again you get to f22 and it's going to look quite soft. Here's a very quick comparison to the Panasonic 1260 kit lens at f5.6. The two lenses almost look identical. There's very little difference in sharpness and colour. This test took forever to set up, but it is quite revealing. At f1.8, you can see there's quite a deep vignette into the corners, but notice the lack of aberration in the corners, and it's fairly sharp across the plane, really, all the way through. Um, f5.6 is our sharpest point again, and that's as good as it's gonna get for vignette. There is still a slight vignette after 5.6, but uh, it is quite easy to remove. But again, the impressive thing for me is the lack of chromatic aberration in this high contrast scene. Okay, let's do a comparison now to the Panasonic 1260 using the same test. You may notice the Panasonic has more chromatic aberration in the corners and is softer generally in the corners than the Lauer. You must also bear in mind that a lens profile has been added to the Panasonic lens automatically in the raw processor, so that benefits from that as well. It's also worth noting at this focal length that the Panasonic lens exhibits more vignette than the Lauer. I wasn't able to get much test footage before the coronavirus lockdown. I did take a few shots around the house, so I hope you enjoy what you see, and I hope it gives you some idea of what this lens is capable of.
summarise, I love this lower lens. It's great value for money. The 1260 kit lens is a great lens. It's sharp throughout its range, but I have had bad samples of this in the past. The lower lens, on the other hand, has character. I love its build quality. I enjoy the manual focus, and I even like it for its faults. That vignette is wicked, and it was cheap.